guys. Finally, episode 15, finally out. Welcome to the Me Time Gamer podcast. Hopefully everybody's going well. Yeah, like I said, this is uh, Me Time Gamer, John, whatever you want to call me, episode 15 of the podcast. It's been a while, sorry, I finally decided to get my lazy butt uh, recording a podcast. I, I don't know I don't know why I don't do these more regularly. They're pretty easy to do, it's just sometimes I just feel more like playing games than recording myself speaking into my microphone just look at my sound wave going while i'm recording it's a bit weird but anyway <laughs> so yeah i'm back with another podcast felt like recording a bit more motivated uh, uh it's it sometimes it sucks when you're trying to record a podcast and you're tired so uh, lately i've been feeling that a lot more but this today i just felt like a lot more made, motivated to create something more unique than just a let's play video that i usually do so a lot of, we got a couple we got about four articles of news today I got to talk I want to talk about that caught my attention from this week or in a bit from last week and of course we're going to talk we're going to start off by talking what I what I've been playing lately and also uh, I think I got another kickstarting it for you guys you guys can uh, can go help out there we'll talk a bit more about that at the end so let's start off with what I've been playing lately. So uh, of course, if you read the channel at uh, youtubecom forward slash me time gamer, you will see that I've been playing a lot of Outlast lately, which uh, hopefully I'll be continuing very soon. I've been playing only Outlast like increments of 30 minutes at a time. It's just easier to, for me to upload f to YouTube, and uh, I have I, noticed in the past that when I when I'm recording a 45 to an hour long a playthrough video, people don't tend to watch them all the way through. Which, uh, which is weird because I find that, like, for me, uh, I have, like, a little, a little, um, little maybe less known fact about me is I cut cable about a year ago, and, like, I watch your regular YouTubers, like, Markiplier, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, and a couple other ones, and when they put playthroughs, I don't, like, I'll usually, if they're an hour long, I'll, I'll probably watch them if it's a game, like, I'm, I'm, I'll usually watch the game if it's a game I'm not intending to play, but I want to see what it is. So I definitely check those videos out and I find that I, I don't mind the video being an hour long because me, it sort of replaces a TV show, which you, which the average person will spend, uh, depending a uh, 22, 22 minutes or an hour, 45 minutes watching a TV show, uh, with commercial break. But what's fun about a YouTube, YouTube, usually there's no commercial breaks or you can skip them in most cases, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I've been playing Outlast, um, uh, so yeah, 30 minutes increments for you guys to enjoy a bit better. Do find they're a bit more manageable. Try to cut out. I'm trying to cut it in areas where it's not just cutting in the middle of the action. It's actually like a, where it slows down into the action. Uh, another game I've been playing. I think that's the video. Is that the video I released yesterday? I always forget. Uh, um, whatever. Uh, it's I think I've been playing Beholder. Uh, that's another fun game. Like it's. Um, I think it's ran pretty much randomized the way it works. I haven't I haven't started up a second career yet, but I think it's pretty much uh, randomized where you uh, you start off. You're just if you haven't seen the video, uh, definitely go check out check it out uh, on my YouTube page. But uh, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a game that you play a superintendent in sort of a totalitarian uh, government, and you have to um, evict or get rid of uh, people that are breaking the law. And every so off, every couple of hour in-game hours, you like have new uh, directives from the government, like like new rules, like some stupid ones, like no imported music, no blue jeans, no uh, singing between, uh, no singing out loud in front of uh, ministry agents, and uh, no stuff like that. So it gets pretty crazy, and like some of the missions, like um, uh, help out, uh, evict this guy. He hasn't done anything, but we don't want him in the building anymore because he's been, we he has potential for problems or stuff like that. So it's a pretty fun game to play, actually. I want to get Dabble more into, but it's a game. It, it sucks because the last time I played it, I played it for two hours. But you guys only saw 17 minutes of it. But I played for two hours because I, once I was done the part that I wanted to record, I just kept playing and playing. And then I actually I, I got like eliminated at the end because once you run out of money, you sort of uh, get a uh, you get arrested for uh, embezzlement because you don't have enough money to pay the fines. When because you do get fines if you don't finish missions, you get fi uh, fined. Uh, if uh, if you don't pay uh, if you don't pay some bills, you get fined. Uh, if uh, like the way mine ended, a little bit of spoiler there for my ending of the video is uh, like my I had to pay like seven thousand dollars. My son needed seven thousand dollars for something, and of course, like I didn't have that much money in game to pay that that thing but then after that because i didn't pay it uh, he went out and he tried to rob a bank and because he was a minor 
I was fine. Two thousand, uh, four thousand dollars for damages, and and I just I was just missing like a couple hundred dollars, and I got a, oh well, you don't have enough money, so you're going to be arrested for embezzlement and game over. You're like, ah oh, shit. <laughs> so that that's a fun game though. It's like it's uh, I was going fine. I had a lot of money. Then everything went down fucking hill, and then I lost everything. And within a, within ten minutes, you're like, ah, oh, damn. So I showed that in the end of the videos. Definitely can check that out. Uh, one other thing I've been doing lately is streaming a bit more. I've only been streaming a couple hours at a time. Uh, while I'm recording it, I'm probably I'm, after I'm done recording this, I'm probably gonna go try to stream at least an hour there after I'm done. Uh, which doesn't matter for you because you're not. <laughs> you you can you can go catch me anyway. I usually try to stream at least an hour or two around 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, over on twitchtv forward slash gamer and uh, yeah, so I've been lately. I've been just streaming um, Watch Dogs 2. I think I'm gonna finish it pretty soon there on the stream. So definitely check that out. I've got a, bat a backlog of about six videos that I need to edit and put into YouTube, which I don't know. I'm using more of a, as buffer videos. Like if ever there's one days I don't want to record, I just use those videos as like uh, like uh, inserts. So so at least I got content for that the next day or whatever if I don't feel like editing. And uh, yeah, that's those are pretty much the three main games I've been playing. I've been looking for other games to play. Uh, I got multiple other games that I might start streaming after Watch Dogs 2. Or either that or I'll try to like 100%. Uh, I still have Horizon to finish. Um, I, I'm pretty. I'm getting pretty pretty far in Horizon that I want to get done after a while. My French came up there for a second there. Oh, Horizon. See that's a French thing. Uh, if you're if you when you start when you when an, a French person starts talking English, they'll sometimes like in, in the word air like just air will will add the h. We'll do hair, and p words that have an h at the beginning will have will we won't will remove the h. Uh, what word uh, like horse? You'll say horse. I've seen I've seen some French people do that. It's funny. I used to do that uh, once in a while, but now it's not as bad as it used to be. Uh, I know I, I know a lot of people when I speak when I speak English to them they don't even know I speak French because uh, my I would say my my accent is pretty um, well under control some would say <laughs> so yeah anyway uh, that's out of the way that's what I've been playing so we will be moving right into the news. All right, so our first article of news actually came out a couple hours ago. Uh, this is an article from GameSpot. Um, from uh who is it uh alex newhouse and uh it's about payday 2 now payday 2 has been out since 2013 and uh the company that makes the game starbreeze announced uh let's let, let me read a little paragraph from a couple paragraphs from the article here it says starbreeze announced the vr version today in a live stream and subsequently released a trailer for it it looks pretty well payday 2 is already a hectic and chaotic game so it's most likely to be even crazier when you strap into a headset. This isn't just this isn't just a small companion experience either. The developer is making the entire game in VR. You can watch the full trailer, but okay. Uh, because of the this is simply paid two ported to VR. Any unlocks you've earned in the existing game will be available right away. In addition, it will have cross-play between the VR and normal version, meaning that you can play in VR with friends who don't have a headset. Payday 2 VR will be free for current owners of the game on PC. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they were showing it in a live stream. I think I said that upstairs, and they were show they were playing it in HTC Vive, and they they don't they had they haven't said that it was uh, it was going to be released for Oculus Rift, and they they also said in later in the article uh, that the beta will be coming sometime in 2017, which is should be pretty cool if you guys are into. Uh, into uh pd2 i know a lot of people like when i'm streaming they want me to play uh, pd2 which i got a sucky computer so it's hard for me to play it on 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 the pc i can play on the ps4 but nobody nobody has it it's not popular on the ps4 as much as it, it as much as it is on the pc version of, of things and uh, yeah I'm, I'm happy there's a, that companies are actually porting their games to vr because vr needs a lot of game it's one thing if i had money i would probably post uh, vr videos for you guys because i don't see a lot of vr uh, videos on youtube itself it's pretty much still a niche market and a lot not a lot not a lot of people are actually buying the vr kits so uh, what what i've seen lately in the news is some of the big vr companies are trying to like uh, uh like oculus and vive and uh, the playstation vr are trying to like 
have the, their system all work together so you can play one game with all three systems so i mean like you can uh what's the word i'm looking for uh you can play uh, you can play against other opponents like if you have a psvr you can play with somebody that has an oculus uh one game or something like that which is pretty fun at least that helps the community evolve community evolves into a bigger thing and makes it more uh uh involved and uh, allows the allows it to grow even bigger and hopefully in the few in the next couple of years we'll see vr g gaining more grounds because it is, it is it is a technology that i do see uh ha that has a lot of potential but it has to be done right like if if um at e3 this year play if uh, sony doesn't talk about vr well they're already they're already shitting the bed and not letting the 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 experience uh, come to life if they're if they're killing it like they did to the ps uh, vita a couple years ago where they decided to stop talking about it or whatever they'd only say oh we got a couple of games it's not big games but it's a little micro games which uh which uh that would suck talking about one little uh one little uh thing i want to talk about is i've been playing actually my i got my ps uh vita out and i've uh completed uh severed which is an awesome game if you guys are looking for a game it was free a couple months ago on a ps plus and believe me if you if you have it in your queue and you haven't played it yet definitely play it it's definitely a fun game to play on the ps vr uh, on the ps uh, vita sorry excuse me for that and uh yeah so back to v the um, payday 2 on vr definitely go check that out uh if you guys if you got on pc it's free to upgrade if you have the 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 oculus uh sorry the uh, vive uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to go see the trailer if I'm not showing it on the YouTube version of the video. If you're looking, only listening to the auto, well, go check out for a trailer on YouTube uh, on another uh, channel or whatever on... Uh, uh, what's the name of the... Uh, uh, wait, just give me a second. I wanted... Uh, yeah, on Starbreeze's... Uh, they probably have a YouTube channel up there or something. So, yeah, so hopefully more, more, more power to companies that do that. It's definitely something that I want to see more. It's, it's just going to motivate uh, as long as they can get the, the hardware even cheaper and better because the technology is getting better as it goes and it's, it's getting less expensive to produce. And like me, that's my only thing that that's making me not buy one is because I don't have the budget for it right now because I would love to have a PlayStation VR to, to, to play and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we will be moving on to the next news I got. And what is the next one I have here? Oh, the next one is actually, they announced it, uh, was it, uh, what was it, yesterday, I think? Yeah, it was yesterday, uh, May 9th. So this is an article from actually uh, from the guys at Ghost Game, and it's a new Need for Speed. So in 2017, Need for Speed is coming back. So if I, I'm going to read the article that they posted there on their website. Is uh, hello, hey everyone. We want to drift by and talk about a topic that we know you're just as passionate about as we are, the next Need for Speed. By now, many of you will have heard the, the talk that a new game is in development here at Ghost Games. Uh, we're happy to announce by, that by the end of 2017, you will be playing a new Need for Speed game. Uh, we have a lot more detail to share as we get closer to EA Play in June. That's that's about where uh, where uh, that's like their event uh, alongside E3. There, they don't do the old conference thing. They just do well. I guess it's still a conference. They just call it EA Play. Yeah, last year was still in E3. Anyway, so the article continues. Uh, in the meantime, we can share a few details about various aspects of Need for Speed, uh, what they mean to you, to us as developers, and to the franchise as a whole. Uh, then they just thank people for the, all the, the success for the 2015 launch of the the reboot of the series, pretty much. And then they're talking about like bringing back a lot of customization. Then there's a cool screenshot under article. Looks pretty cool. And then they're talking about uh, the cop thing all coming back. Uh, whenever you're fresh, you customize, blah, blah, blah. Competition. Uh, drifting, I, I would assume. And then other stuff like that. And I think I think the last game was only online. And I think this time... Uh, uh, yeah, like, let's finish on the biggest discussion point around the last game, Always Online. To say that this is a topic you're passionate about would be an understatement. understatement and whenever there's a topic, this gathers as much attention and feedback from you is that is that we took note so we when we release when release day rolls around the next need for speed you'll be able to play through a single player experience completely offline before yes and we know you will this does this does mean you will be able to pause the game so okay i guess th i haven't played a need for speed in so long so i didn't know that they actually do did like a always online type, type of thing which is nice 
and uh, that, that's pretty much all for the I guess blog post or news on their Need for Speed Newswire. Yeah, uh, Newswire. That's all they had about this little uh, little announcement there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, 2017. So uh, that it's fun when game companies actually do that. They, they actually don't announce a game until like uh, let's say just uh, there's what six months, seven months before the end of the year. So six months, pretty good. Unlike let, let's say, um, well, Red Dead's actually I was gonna say Red Dead like how they announced it so early, but it's fine because they did announce it they only talked about it twice with within a week or so like they 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 said they were they they were announcing they they sorry they released screenshot and then they announced the trailer they, they showed the trailer and then they stopped they didn't do anything else so yeah it's not that good of an example because a lot of game when when it sucks when they talk about it and like, oh, well this game's coming out in two years uh we'll we'll sprinkle out information that that's kind of that's kind of sucky because you're you're sort of creating hype and then everybody loses the hype because they have, they're waiting so long for the game. So Need for Speed is fun because this is a game I've, uh, I haven't played in a while, but like m one of my favorite one was Need for Speed Carbon, uh, and Underground. Underground and Carbon are some of my favorite, uh, Need for Speeds. Uh, those are the ones like just the customization, the drifting, all that. I found that the game was always good at portraying those uh, pretty well. And, uh, yeah, so more power to these guys. I can't wait to see, uh, I, there's only a screenshot right now. There's no trailer out or anything like that. I'm assuming in the next couple of weeks or months, they will be, show us a trailer since it's coming out at the end of the year. So it's, it's not in beta version probably right now. It's more in the, like, final polishing stage, stages. And, yeah, so our next article is from, uh, it's about, uh, it's from Polygon. It's written by Samid Sakar. Sorry if I ruined your name there. Uh, it's a report, new Assassin's Creed game is a prequel called Origin. So the article goes as follow. The next Assassin's Creed title will be a prequel called Assassin's Creed Origin, set in ancient Egypt according to a leaked image of the game cor corroborated by Eurogamer as well as other media reports. So this is only a rumor, yet it hasn't been confirmed by um, Ubisoft itself, but the, the, there, there is a screenshot I'll post on the video version of the, the podcast. You'll probably be seeing it right now. Uh, we'll be seeing that. Uh, so the article continues. Earlier, earlier today, a now deleted Reddit account posted the image above of the Assassin's Creed subreddit as your, uh, between quotes, uh, your first look to your first look at Assassin's Creed Origin. It appears to be a photo of a computer monitor running a development build of a game in which a character is standing on a wooden sailboat. A bow and an arrow, as well as a shield, are slung across the individual's back. It was possible to raid boats in the previous game in 2015's Assassin's Creed Syndicate, but the last... Sorry, was that... It was possible, yeah, okay, yeah. But at last main mainline entry in the series allow players to pilot boat in 2013's uh, Black Flag. Uh, so there's a... Uh, the, the, the article continues detailing more of the screenshot, like uh, there's a mission for Eliminate Crocodile, which was a... A big problem, I guess, in the ancient Egyptian uh, times. Uh, what was the other thing they, they noted? Look very Egyptian style. Um, just give me a second here. And the Egyptian immortalized under Matali with Salbeck, a protective but aggressive god associated with the military. Uh, Kanu was an Egyptian. Okay, so it just keeps going, explaining why it seems very. Uh, uh, a lot like uh, Assassin's Creed, it, it probably is. They have to, you got multiple sources. They have uh, Eurogamer. There's their Eurogamer are usually pretty good once they reveal something. Uh, if you go on the original Eurogamer uh, article, they say they have three really reliable sources uh, about this. And usually, what happens is Assassin, the Assassin's Creed is a pretty leaky franchise. That's what I read somewhere. But uh, uh, if you if you've been watching Assassin's Creed for all you, I've already I've noticed this myself. Uh, Assassin's Creed always leaks. It always has like every year, a month or two before they announce it, it always leaks that the game there's a game coming out. Uh, like the the article says, this is a very um, like an alpha or beta stage uh, built because you got all the coding at the bottom there. The like uh, I guess for uh, for testing sake and stuff like that so that's pretty fun they, they took a year off last year which was i think it was well deserved for the series uh at, at least i don't know i'm not what happened what sucked about assassin's creed is the assassin's creed syndicate with with it's a game i have been playing uh i haven't played in a while but i've i did start playing it on the channel on the youtube channel and it's definitely a game that's way f more fun than the rest of the other assassin's creed uh the one i played before uh right before Sa uh, syndicate was sorry about that uh, the, the the first syndicate i played before sorry 
Let me start that over. I have the burps. So I'm drinking pop, and it's not always good to talk when you're drinking pop. Uh, the, the the first, uh, the the only Assassin's Creed, the, sorry, the other Assassin's Creed game I played before Syndicate was Liberation on the PS Vita, which was pretty fun. Uh, with uh, I don't remember the character's name there, uh, Black Lady. I just can't remember her name uh, right now. It's gonna maybe come back to me later. But Assassin's Creed Syndicate was actually pretty entertaining to play. I always had a fun time to play that the, the game. Uh, for what I played, sort of the gang thing. As soon as you have a sort of a gang element, like you have to take over part of town uh, and and reinforce your gang aspect and take off take out big bosses. It's always an aspect like I enjoy. Like that one of the best example I got is uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which you have to take uh, you have to make um, uh, the Grove Street become the the big gang in the city, which was an awesome part of the game. That's one of the best part of that game for me personally and uh yeah so we will be having a new assassin's creed uh yeah like i was saying before i deviated from like a way way off course like that boat in the image uh we um so assassin's creed origin they took a break last year uh at least they left off on syndicate if you haven't played uh, syndicate Definitely go check it out. It's one of their best games, I would have to say. At least they didn't they didn't leave the series in like a Unity type thing. I mean, Unity did not do well, and I think that's why Syndicate didn't do well either after it because it was such a bad. They they kept doing a bad Assassin's Creed one after the other. Not bad like a like a four out of ten. It was like a seven or six point five or an eight type deal but it's people got tired and fatigued with Assassin's Creed because it's one of those big open worlds and each game looked they look pretty similar one to the other the only the only thing that changed very much was like the the aesthetic and where where it took place but the main folk the main things were almost pretty much the same i know with ubisoft the team's big enough they probably have longer cycles between like uh every year they had the long cycles probably like they had a one team working on syndicate for three years and then another team another team work on unity for a couple years and blah 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 and uh, I, th I think what really screwed up Unity was actually, if I remember, Unity came out. Unity came out when uh, when they when uh, at the same time the uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue and Rogue was on the old consoles, and Unity was the one of the, the the first Assassin's Creed on the new console. If I remember, that was exclusive to the new consoles, and I think that's what maybe screwed screwed that version up, and then it soured the the rest of the way for Syndicate, which it sucks because Syndicate's a pretty fun game. Definitely go check it out. And so, yeah, we're going to have a new Assassin's Creed maybe this year. If they're going to talk about it, either they're going to talk about it in the next weeks or they're going to talk it at E3, which I'm assuming that's what they're going to do. That's the most logical thing to do now from how much, how long there is left to from here to E3. Most people are going to talk about their new games at E3. So that's it for Assassin's Creed. The last news I got to talk to you, uh, I want to talk to you about is, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember a couple years back, uh, when was it here? Just trying to find the... the time give me just a second there now this is an article from i'm reading this from uh uh from uh, kotaku which is not always a site i like to look at because like just just the title itself uh, the title itself when you read it you're like okay that doesn't make sense uh to the game like the the, the title of their article is hacker makes nintendo playstation fully optional uh, fully operational i guess it's a it's more of a sort so it's supposed to be more of a funny type title because it's not a hacker well it is it's the ben it's ben heck so if you know ben heck he's more i don't personally watch ben heck which is something i should do because he, he seems to do really cool things so i did watch your video on uh basically so basically if i if i, I can stop stop marauding around here if that's the right word uh there the, if you, the, a couple years ago i think it's 2003 they say in this article 2005 uh, when the Nintendo PlayStation, of you new guys remember that, when in the early days before PlayStation came out, the first PlayStation came out, Nintendo and Sony were trying to create like a, uh, a related console, and what what the first one of the prototypes they had was the what people have been calling the Nintendo PlayStation, which is a mix of a cartridge base. Uh, player and it also plays CD, one of the first kind of CD play well, not the first kind, but I mean sort of uh, the modern age uh, CD-ROM uh, type uh, a game player and uh, when they found it, this this is an old prototype someone found and they actually uh, Ben Heck was actually, they actually brought it to Ben Heck so he can, uh, this guy is like a uh, like a, 
uh, a com- not, uh, not a, I wouldn't say a computer whiz, but he does like, uh, he, he's a hardware whiz where he's able to take hardware and bring it back to life or modify it way better to make it mo- even more awesome thing out of it. And that's what they did in this case. They, they took the, they took the Nintendo PlayStation and brought it, bring it, brought it back to life. That's all he did. And that was pretty cool. They got the cartridge portion working first in a couple of videos, which I didn't watch, but the video I watched is they finally had, they f- were finally able to get the uh, CD ROM able to play. And then, uh, they had, uh, got people send them, uh, ROMs, CD, uh, ROM ROMs, like, sorry. That was kind of stupid. <laughs> I mean, CD with ROMs on them to ma- to actually make it work, and they actually got it to work. So there is a video. I'll probably uh, show you a bit of, bit of the video right here, but I'll definitely link to you. I'll link you guys the video in the description so you can check that out if in the video format. So definitely go check out the video format on YouTube. And yeah, so that's pretty impressive. Definitely cool. It would have been fun to see what would happen if uh, Nintendo wouldn't have dicked over Sony. And uh, you see what happened today. Now Sony is more popular than Nintendo. So, <laughs> well, maybe some people, some some of you might argue on that. But uh, so far, um, when you got 50 million units out there, and yeah, okay, the Switch is selling a lot of units, and it's sold out everywhere. I don't, I don't know if I don't know if um, some people say it will. I don't personally think Nintendo will be able to sell more than Sony and Xbox. Uh, maybe Xbox because Xbox only has has like 25, 30 million units sold. Which is outstanding, and we'll see if the Nintendo Switch will be able to beat that. But uh, it would have been interesting to see if uh, Sony and Nintendo would have been able to uh, get that stuff working together. Uh, would have seen what it would have, if it would have worked out better for everybody. And uh, yeah, that's it for all the news I got for today. Not a big, uh, not a lot of big news. That's all uh, news that actually interesting me to talk about. So we will move on to our one segment I like to call kickstarting it. I'm- so if you guys don't know what kickstarting it is, basically I go rummaging around in Indiegogo or Kickstarter. And I try to find a game that needs pledging or that needs money to get kick kickstarted, and basically I I shoot it out to you guys, talk to talk to it, talk about it to you guys, so you guys can uh, definitely you can you can go check it out and uh, go uh, support it if you want, not or not if you don't want to. But uh, for this time around, I found a little game on Kickstarter called Atomic At- Atom RPG. Sorry, I sort of fucked up the name. So uh, Atom RPG. So uh, I will of course put a dis- put a link in the um, a link in- for the Kickstarter in the description of the YouTube article uh, of the YouTube video. So if you are listening to the audio, of course, once again, go check out the YouTube portion, uh, the YouTube video, and the link should be there or on my website, metimegamer.com. There will be a uh, the article with all uh, for the videos there, and you can find the link from there. Uh, so basically, Adam RPG. Basically, uh, it's a crazy and dangerous adventure in the post-apocalyptic Soviet Russia. So basically, the game. Uh, so for the main information so far, just give me a second here. Sorry about that. So for main information about the game, you uh, the game needs fifteen thousand dollar for goal for a goal. So I'm guessing they're pretty advanced in the game. So the game, uh, if I remember seeing on this, the, there's they have a, sp- a page on Steam. I think it's uh, they're announcing for beginning of 2018. Uh, so yeah, they do need fifteen thousand dollar for their uh, for their goal, and they have nine thousand five hundred seventy three as of uh, May 10th, and they have three hundred thirty three backers, and there's 20, still twenty three days to go. So you guys have plenty of time to go check that out. Uh, so about the project, so this game has been greenlit. Uh, by the community so adam rpg let me read you the description of the game so the t- the deterioration in relation between eastern and western bloc in the 1979 um, has led to a full-blown armageddon between nuclear powers in the year 1986 the war was swift devastating and brutal the fact that humanity persevered was miraculous 19 years have passed and it's 20, 20, 2005 sorry why the hell did i have problems saying that it's 2005 both 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 once great empires and their allies now lie in ruins but on top of those ruins the new civilization are slowly emerging the story takes place in a small patch of land in the south part of the ussr where you take the role of an undercover operative from the secret bunker society called adam your mission is to find any traces of, of an expedition that recently stopped contact, contacting the main base Adam is a passion project. I'm finished no matter what, but it will be able to do it much faster. Okay, 
So, oh, there's a demo below. I probably, oh, I'll probably go check out the demo. That's proof I didn't even see there was a demo. The combat is a turn-based combat, which it's not really something I'm an, I usually enjoy. Uh, turn this, so I usually enjoy. Oh, and by the way, it says uh, delivery February 2018. So we'll have to see that if there's a demo, I'll definitely try to play it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's, it, it is a turn-based. It, it basically, um, let me find some information. So non-linear, non-linearity. Uh, the game's an open world. You're not going to go through corridors or investigating a mystery. This could be achieved by numerous ways. There is no artificial boundaries in the world of Adam. Oh, and there is no essential character in the game. So everybody's fair game characters. These 300 characters in game, all of them, their unique personalities and pertinent dialogue. There's encounters and quests. There's combat. There's weapon and item customization there's and it keeps going and going and going and going and going and going so it's an isometric kind of game so you're looking at a top uh, sideways uh, camera for of the character and uh yeah so definitely go check out the kickstarter like i said the link is ab- is below this uh if you're listening to the uh, video which i might be putting in the in my in my youtube video of this podcast uh they're 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 heavily it's heavily inspired on fallout and that those type of games so you guys will definitely have the when you when i watched the video i personally got a big uh, vibe of fallout uh other games that like uh that resemble the wa- uh, wa- uh wasteland was it wasteland yeah wasteland and things like that so definitely go check out you guys can definitely go pledge for to that game it's still available for 23 days and uh yeah that's funny enough that that game i i didn't see it for the First time I saw it would, wasn't even on Kickstarter. It was actually what, one of those games that uh, that popped up on my Facebook feed. I was like, oh great, another fucking Facebook announcement game for a shitty, uh, for a shitty fucking game. Because usually it's always that that's always the case on Facebook. It's always it always advertises shitty games on mobile or something like that. And you're like, oh fuck, that looks disgusting. But when I saw that, I'm I'm big into post-apocalyptic games. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, I'll I'll give it a chance. Go take a look. And uh, d- uh, definitely something that really fucking caught my attention. So definitely go check that out. And uh, yeah, so I will leave in the, uh, the link in the description below. All right, guys, so that's enough uh, jibber-jabber and uh, just plain old stupid talking for the day. <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, me thinking of what I want to say. Sometimes it's just a bit weird. I'm, I don't know what to say half the time. And that's why I've tried to make it more relaxed and not scripted, like I said in multiple, uh, the couple past podcasts there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the podcast. That was super fun. A lot of cool stuff going on uh, for me, for games in general. I can't wait for Red Dead at the end of the year. That's really the game I really can't wait to... Uh, put on put on youtube and fucking stream it for you guys that w- that's going to be the, the fun part and all of this and uh yeah so it's time for me to say a farewell for today of course if you enjoyed the podcast rate me on itunes i'm there i'm also i'm not only on itunes i'm on uh, google play i'm on uh stitcher uh tune in and anywhere else that they rip my rsss feed from my website where they can find my podcast <laughs> uh, and if ever of course if you ever if you ever find a location that you need to pay for my podcast don't you can fight it for free i never charge for a podcast nobody does so why the fuck would you pay for this podcast uh who knows maybe in the future if i get popular enough i might uh, might give you the first 10 the first uh, the 10 last episode for free and then and the, the older episode cost money i don't know like a lot of podcast a lot of podcasts lately have been doing that uh which is fair i would say it's for for um you get the first, the last 10 episodes for free and then it, it seems like a fair model i would say and you pay like 199 a month or something like that <laughs> so it's it seems pretty pretty like a cool little thing to do uh talking about money which is not always a subject i like talking about to fans of uh of the community is of course if you want to help support the page definitely you can do that either by uh going on patreon.com for slash me time remember i got one tier i think it's a 499 dollars uh, tier if it's not that it's probably lower than that and uh, i'm not offering much uh, like i like i say all the time i'm not offering anything in particular i'm just it's a way for you guys to support me monthly if you guys want to help me i'm really i'm really in it. i'm really um lately i'm really trying to get money to build myself a new pc because this laptop is just not doing it right now 
It's just a shit. It's not a shitty laptop. It's just like I can't. I, there's a lot of stuff I can't do because the, my laptop's not powerful enough. Like uh, you'll see sometimes the quality of the videos are not always good, and uh, sometimes like even this in the podcast, you'll see that the the podcast the audio is always a bit weird because I had the because my audio is so cl- because of a laptop the way it's made. There's a lot of interference with the microphone, which is a bit weird, like a power mic. Uh, power interference and stuff like that which is a bit weird anyway so yeah you can definitely check out patreon and of course if you if you're uh, if you stop by the stream you can donate to uh, uh via uh, you can tip on the on the on the stream and stuff like that but you don't have to all my content's free for you guys if you guys want to watch it or it's simple as if when you go to youtube instead of skipping over the instead of skipping over the ad at the beginning of the video or at the end of the video just let it play and that gives me ad revenue and that is it so of course uh, if you're on youtube if you're watching us this on youtube like the video and subscribe to the channel we really appreciate that if you're listening to podcast to, to the podcast version you can also go to go to youtube and do that also if you want to follow me i'm um, pretty much everywhere on on all the social media media you can follow me everywhere as me time gamer on twitter twitch facebook and of course on youtube.com for slash me time gamer where i post a new video every day the week monday to friday 3 p.m eastern time So thank you so much, guys, for watching and listening, and I will see you in the next uh, stream. Keep on keeping on.